Well, at the beginning of the last video, we said objects basically have metadata. We call them attributes and have functionalities, which we call methods. We've so far seen how to create these metadata, like the account number, the account type, uh, the account balance, and we also learned how to bring in the daytime module and to add a dynamic date time to when a bank account is first created on our new digital banking system. So this video will look at the other side of things and we'll focus on methods. This is a continuation of the last video, the attributes, the methods, the objects. So if you haven't seen it yet, please go back to the previous video and as always, all of the code, the scripts, they will be provided to you on my GitHub repository. Let's get started. So speaking of functionalities, I think one of the very key aspect of having a bank account is that you want to actually accumulate interest rate on your bank account. So what if we just implement that as a functionality and we implement that using something called the methods. So um, let's go ahead and actually create something for containing our interest rate and where do you think we should go with this? Do we put our interest rate in here like this? Do we do it for let's say 4% uh, annual interest rate? Do we do it here or should we put it up here? What do you if, if you have to pause the video for a bit and think about this question a little bit Where do you think is the more reasonable place to put this interest rate on the multi-currency account? Or should it be on the parent class the the interest rate um, in the account itself? So which one do you think is uh, the right place to put this? Now I would argue that the right place to put it would be up here in the account class because it would then be inherited uh, into market multi-currency account. The whole rational being that whether or not you start a multi-currency account, there should be an interest rate. You can, you can of course overwrite this if you want. So you can do it like that if you want. Um, if you don't, then multi-currency account is gonna uh, is gonna inherit the interest rate because it inherit from the account that's a parent class parent class. So if I go ahead and actually create the MCA and change this to something like interest rate so let's go ahead say interest rate and i'm gonna remove the rest just remove all of that remove the rest and save the file and execute the script so let's go ahead and say python demo.py because that's what i named my file i named my file demo.py so i'm gonna execute that using python so python demo.py run that and what do i see i see 0 0.04 now 0 0.04 is because I, it inherits from the parent class itself so if I want to overwrite that, I want to say, no, if you're actually on a multi-currency account, you don't get the 0 0.04 interest rate, you don't get 4%, you get 1%, okay? So I can then copy that and change that here. Now this will then cause, this will then, what this will mean is, let me just make this really, really clear so that uh, there's no room for mistakes here. So if I change this interest rate right here, so I'm printing out two figures right here. I'm printing out the first interest rate for my normal account, bank account, a non-multi-currency account, and then I'm printing out the interest rate for my multi-currency bank account, right? And if I execute my script right now, save it, execute my script, you see 0 0.04 for my normal bank account, the interest rate, and then 0 0.01 for my multi-currency account. I hope that's no surprise to you, right? So what we just did was we just overwrite that value, all right? Now, let's go and implement the functionality to calculate and to maybe return, let's say we have a very smart digital banking system and want to return some value every time a user query for that. So I'm gonna say every time the user asks for, let's say the yields, or let's say something like uh, returns, right? So what is my, what, what, what do I return? And I'm gonna implement my functionality like that. So the user would expect to call my, because this is a method, instead of passing in like an attribute, you would have to call the method. And the way you do that is you say something like my account dot returns and you put a bracket. So this is different from this. This is an attribute. Interest rate is an at attribute. So interest rate is an attribute. And so you don't actually need to call the attribute. There is no need for any parenthesis. But returns is a class method, it's a method. So we need to call it, call the method, meaning to execute the method using parenthesis, the brackets, parenthesis, okay? So hopefully this is clear. But now we have interest rate, that is just an attribute. Look, there is there, this is not a function, it's just an attribute, it's just a plain number. The number will be zero, the number will be 0 0.04, it's just a plain number. But this one, this actually have to return something because this is a method, okay? And we're gonna make it simple. We're gonna just go ahead and actually say something like return uh, a string that says something like 
your balance is now worth your balance is worth whatever amount uh let's say you want to make this a little bit more complicated to, to maybe add some complexity to it i'm gonna accept something like year in year okay and how do i implement this properly now first of all what I expect the user to do is I expect the user to say, okay, this is if I start my bank account with this amount, this is my account balance. In two years' time, how much would my account be worth? Or how much money would I have in the bank? Okay. And I want this figure to be something like one year or two years or three years. So I can go ahead, let's just go ahead and create another one too here. So first I said, how much would it return in a year and how much would it return in two years? And I'm gonna have to implement that here. Now, this is a string that I'm returning. This is a string that I'm returning. So, meaning if I were to just save this and run it, I get my string back. Your balance is worth this. But it doesn't have the functionality implemented yet. We will need to do some math in here to calculate what that is. But since you're a, likely a banker, because you're watching this video, uh, the Python for Banker series, you probably know how to do that. Um, you, if you want a little bit of challenge, then what you can do is to pause the video and try to implement that functionality on your own before you come back and uh, do this together with me. But um, one thing we can do right off the bat is we just can make this, instead of a string, we're going to make it a formatted string. A formatted string means we can have computed values within. So um, I'm going to just add an F in front and this will make it make this a formatted string. And notice that all of this... Um, works because I'm using a very recent version of Python, Python 3.9, I believe I'm on. Um, you have to you have to make sure that you're actually using a, uh, a Python 3.7 and above to get all of these working um, correctly. If you're using an older version of Python, uh, you probably have to use something like a format method like that instead of doing something like F, okay? But anyway, let's go back to, to, to our point here. Um, this is the year. So uh, what I want to do is just copy that, change this, and put year. So your balance is worth how much in year years. So just to make sure this looks this works correctly, let's let me zoom out a little bit. Make sure that you can see my terminal, uh, right here, and execute that. Now the first one it says one. So your balance is worth what in one year. The second one it says returns and it passes in two. So this two basically says this 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 parameter this two is actually passed into the year parameter which is then fit into the formatted string okay now how do i calculate uh how do i calculate the the actual worth here so this is where i said this you could actually actually have this as your own challenge if you want to um if not we'll do it together so give you a second pause the video think a little bit about how you would implement that uh the big hint the big clue of course is the interest rate so how would you do that Okay, so we will actually need to remove this and we will need to do another computed value here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say self account balance. So we're going to take the account balance and what we're going to do with the account balance. We're going to say multiply by 1.04. But if we do that, that's actually hard coding the value. And that's not good because the bank could change interest rate at any time. So the bank could actually go in here and the bank could say something like, uh, let's say account dot interest rate. And we're going to say that is now equals to one, uh, 0 0.05. Now, what's going to happen is that you hard-coded the value and it's not, not going to be any good because now uh, it won't take into effect the latest interest rate change or let's say to 0 0.02. Okay, so that's 2% or maybe even 1% to, to reflect the current climate. This is uh, I'm recording this in the um, near the end of May um, 2021. So uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a time where we're battling with, you know, the... the the aftermath of the pandemic so so if you hard code this value it's not going to take into account the new interest rate so what are we going to do then so the best way to do that is to actually have this value from the interest rate right from the interest rate so instead of doing that i'm going to say one plus what self dot interest rate okay and we need to basically put all of this in a bracket so this is computed first so if the interest rate is 0, .0 uh, 4 or 0 0.05 then that will be 1 plus 0 0.05 that will be multiplied by 1.05 okay and then once you have that you want to take this and you want to say to the power of uh the number of year so if this is one year it would just be to the power of one so there wouldn't be any surprises but if it's two it'd be to the power of two okay so uh let's not worry about let's not worry about this let's comment that out right now 
and let's continue to check for the rest I'm gonna remove this as well so what do I have I created an account I have my account interest rate I said what is the returns in one year what is the returns in two years I implemented the functionality in here so let me save all of that come back in here run the code and what do I see I see that my balance is worth 104 in one year that makes sense because my interest rate is 4% assuming there is no compounding Obviously, if you save for something in a, if you get a long-term uh, deposit account, like a 12 months account, um, you expect some sort of compounding maybe on a quarterly basis, maybe every uh, every six months you expect some compounding effect. Here to keep the math simple, because we're really not trying to learn finance here, we're really trying to learn Python here. It's really a Python for for, for bankers cl class and not a Python for, uh, not a banker for Python class, okay? So let's keep the math simple. Let's not worry about the compounding. Maybe in a later video in this series i'm gonna go in there and show you a little bit more about how you can uh, refine this but for now let's just keep it simple okay so if i have a hundred dollars in my account bank account and this is my created date now what would happen in one year uh in 12 months time so that would that is going to grow from a hundred which is right here to 104 and in two years it would be 108.16 okay so fairly simple right um this is how we implement the returns now let's say if you want to actually take this and say implement the change in interest rate as well so let's say because of the, the maybe regulatory maybe, maybe it has to do with the the economic the, the stimulus whatever that is you change the interest rate okay some some big macroeconomic factor that is outside of control but the interest rate is now 0 0.02 okay so how do we how do we how would our functions still fair up in our class how do we how does this would this take into effect take into account that let's go ahead save this file run it and what do we see 102 104.04 so it shows that by not hard coding the value in here but using the value that is uh, from the parent class itself it actually makes sure that we can account or, or take into account the new interest rate that is passed in here that is set in here okay so this is a setter and it takes into account that but now this is there is a slight problem here i don't like the formatting in here this is a lot of a lot of decimal points there's a lot of precision i don't need all that precision so i can actually go ahead and change that a little bit more so i can take all of this cut that out and i can say something like round put all of that put a two decimal point so round comma two save that come back down here run it and now i see that i have a nice uh two decimal points 104.04 okay um actually i'm gonna put a dollar sign here as well just to make it a little bit prettier um if you change this to five let's see what's ha what, what's gonna happen run it bam so now i said your balance is worth 105.0 110.25 so far so good right it's not very complicated it's not terribly complicated but since we're in here anyway let's go ahead and actually say uh what if this guy is on uh let's say we have a promo we have a uh, promotion we have a promotional uh, campaign and we want to encourage people to sign up for the multiplier account the dbs multipliers or whatever you call multiplex whatever new campaign that we set up so i'm going to go ahead and create a new account so instead of my account i'm going to change that to new account and i'm going to remove the one here and instead of savings, I'm going to change it to multiplier. And this value is going to be 400. So I want this to be, I want to print the returns of that as well. So I'm going to go ahead, copy that. Oops. Like that. And this would be the new account. Okay. So don't be, don't be, don't be confused here. So I have my current account. I'm going to just remove that. And I'm going to print the returns for my current account, the savings account, and I have a multiplier account. And I'm going to print the returns in two years for the multiplier account. Of course, you need a different account number. So let's go ahead and put it 888 because that's good luck, prosperity. And what we're going to have, <laughs> what we're going to, what we're going to have now, um, we want to try to implement a functionality that take into, take into effect the multiplier account type. So this is very simply implemented using a check, if else check, if you want to, right? So we can actually do something like that. We can say, uh, before you print the returns, check and see if the self.type, the account type, is multiplier. If it's multiplier, did I spell it correctly? No. Multiplier, did I spell that correctly here? Yes. Okay. So if the account type is this, do something. 
then you can say if not do something else like that right you can do it like that or you you can even just omit the else function and just pass a return so because if if this is returned, if there is a value that we uh, to return here, then this whole function will just exceed and this line wouldn't execute anyway. So it's up to you how you want to implement that. You want to implement it with the else uh, clause, you can do that. If you don't want to, you might just want to keep it like that. It's also okay. All right. So we're going to just say return. We're going to copy the same thing here, but we're going to give it an extra 1%. Okay. We're going to give it a bonus 1%. So I want to say something like maybe congratulations. Congratulations, you, you earn an extra 1% and your balance would be something something in something something years. And that sounds about right to me, okay? Um, or your balance would grow to something something in something something years, all right? Now, how do we add that 1% in here? Where do we need to add this? Where do we need to add that 1% in here? The hin is in the interest rate, right? So we could actually say something like plus 0 0.01, 0 0.01, that's correct, okay? So we're gonna say if the going interest rate is 0 0.04, which is here, then it's gonna add 0 0.04 plus 0 0.01. It's gonna add an extra 1% on whatever is the going interest rate. And then the remaining of the formula looks the same. They don't change. Um, decimal point is there too that's okay so all of that is still fine so let's go ahead save this now and let's go and print that so bam the first one we created my account and it says my account actually you know what we should do instead of my account we're just gonna have a uh, uh we're gonna say account for account balance and we're gonna put another one we're gonna say self dot account number account this and then we're going to put something like this account balance is worth all right so we just copy that um do the same thing here like that so it's going to be more explicit we can see what exactly is going to be printed out so that would be it so let's just go ahead and run it now we said account 555555005 balance is worth 110 2.25 in two years um let's change that from two years to maybe three years uh this one this one can be four years. Save it, run it again. Bam. A balance is worth $115.76 in three years. And the multiplier account, the multiplier account, which is this one, congratulations, you earn an extra 1% and your balance will grow to 504 in four years. And that's not bad because we go from 400 uh, uh, sing dollar to 504.99 in four years. And you can maybe, if you want to, you can change the formula a little bit and play around with that but this essentially implements the functionality that we talk about so the last video we focus on the attributes we focus on how to create attributes on our objects um, we call them the the metadata of our objects right things that describe that and in this video though we focus on the functionalities the methods and we're gonna see uh, a little bit more examples of that but this will serve you pretty well in on your OOP path we're barely scratching the surface there's a lot to learn but uh, this is part four of the series I hope you learn a lot, um, a great deal, and I'll see you in the next video where we're going to start to make some of these uh, more concrete and start to introduce some other more uh, purpose-built uh, libraries like NumPy and, 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 and Pandas, um, all these uh, all these uh, tailored solutions for data analysis tasks. So I'll see you. Um, have, a, have a good evening. Have a good day.